welcome back to part two of the Absolute Beginner's Guide to the Airbus. As you'll recall from the last video, we're not using any add-ons except for me using EasyDock and some add-on scenery here for Gatwick. But other than that, this is the Aerosoft Airbus X. We're not using any specific add-ons or, or magic going on, using all the built-in features to do the single most basic flight, including flight route planning from London Gatwick to Paris Charles de Gaulle. We've done the startup, we've done the pushback, we are ready to fully taxi now. We've actually done the taxi checklist a little bit too soon. The next thing we need to do, which is why you are looking at a map of London Gatwick ground, is taxi. Now, we are at gate 6-0. When I started FSX, um, I chose to start at gate 6-0. That puts me right about here, and we are taking off from runway 26 left. What that means is we need to find a way of getting down there. Now, 260 is on taxiway Quebec. We don't want to stay on Quebec all the way down towards the runway because we'll be passing a lot of parking stands. Other aircraft might wish to push back, especially if you're online. So we're going to get off Quebec as soon as possible. So we're going to come down here south on Quebec, turn right onto Romeo, and then follow Romeo all the way down, joining up with Quebec Alpha, then Quebec again, follow Quebec all the way down, and then turn left onto Juliet here, which we will follow all the way to the end of the runway and line up. It sounds a lot more complex than it is, but this is why we have maps. So once again, hit Google, look at the airport you're flying from, search for charts. You should be able to find an airport map there. Make sure you can set a gate in FSX that you can see on the map that's convenient for you, and then you should be able to plot your route. So for us, once again, it is Quebec, Romeo, Quebec Alpha, Quebec, Juliet. Very, very simple route that we're going to follow. So let's get in the cockpit and we will start following it. Okay, now to taxi this, it actually requires a little bit more power than you would actually use in a real aircraft. You need about 40% down here. So I'm just going to push this up to about 40% until we start moving. Then I will back it off. A little bit too much there. Started moving now, so I'm going to back it off to near idle. Here is our ground speed, this green number here. Let me drop down. That's our ground speed. We want about 15 to 20. I actually missed my turning. That's the turning I wanted, but we'll take the next one. Try to get the speed up a little bit. Don't go too slow. And bear in mind, you don't want to turn too fast. So as you're coming up on a turning, come off the throttle and let it just coast down in speed. Now, let me pop outside very quickly. Notice the nose wheel is behind the pilot. It means you need to turn a little bit later than you would think. Look at the taxiway. You will see yellow lines guiding you. So it's not the time to turn yet. There is the yellow turning line coming up. So once that goes under us, we wait a second until it gets behind us. Then right rudder pedal. And that will start our turn. So here it comes. It's passing under the cockpit now. It probably just went behind me. So right rudder pedal. Try to keep the nose wheel on that line. I actually screwed up a little bit there. And then try to keep the nose centered on that line. So again, a little bit of a screw up. We're going to do it again, though. Left rudder pedal now. Not too much. Try to be smooth. Now we are on Romeo. Just going to line up. Increase my power a little bit, a little bit too much. I'm going to follow this down now until it joins up with Juliet pretty much. A little bit too much speed, so gentle on the brake. Follow the other lines. That's a bit better. So we're now in Quebec, I think. I'm going to follow this down and join Juliet. Signs here tell you which taxiways you're on. Hard to see that one. Now, ahead of us is the abandoned runway 8 left, 26 right. Obviously, I'm not using that one. Here we go. We're on Quebec, and it says Juliet is left and right. We are approaching 26 right. 
So we're going to turn here and follow Juliet all the way down to the holding point, the entry point for runway 26 left. So again, don't turn too soon. Like so, I went a bit too much. There we go. Now it's quite a long taxi down here. The Aerosoft Airbus X has a reduced functionality version of FS to Cruise RAS built in, which is the runway alert system. So it will tell us actually once we're about to enter the runway and give us a little bit of help there. It's not going to kick in just yet. We have a way to go. Notice the line shifts a little bit. That's quite normal. Make sure you follow the line. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. Now the aircraft did that on its own, the police prepare for takeoff, I didn't have to do anything, it automatically detects that we're approaching the point we need to be at. So that's the end of runway 26 right, there is 26 left. Looking for our turning point now. Now we could turn here, normally again air traffic control plays into it, they will tell you where they want you. We're going to take the last turning on the right which is this one. Slowing down a little bit and starting my turn. A little wide. Coming back on the power now because turning will reduce your power. Uh, your, your speed, I should say. Two six left. Here we are. Two six right is over there. Normally we would be waiting for air traffic control now to clear us to line up. We're not using air traffic control. It is the absolute beginner's guide to the airbus. So we're just going to line up. And then the next trigger for the built-in crew to do their bit is to physically, completely stop. So I'm going to line up, get the aircraft where I need it to be, which is pretty much at the end of those lights. Whoops. It's actually quite hard controlling the view with a mouse and talking on fraps and uh, recording everything and explaining everything. I'm just going to run the forward a little bit more. You see that probably would have been a better place to turn in. No matter, we're still learning. Okay, so come off the throttles now. You can see them reducing here. Gentle braking. Speeds dropping. And having stopped, that will trigger them to do their next checklist. So we just sit here and wait patiently. Oh, no, they want us to actually go a little bit further forward. So we're not going to. We just click the button and force it to start on its own. Before takeoff checklist. Check. Are off. Check normal. TA and RA third above. Set on. Stowed. Now I actually screwed up a little bit. I didn't set everything the way it should be set. We didn't set our flight level, for example, which is going to be 330. Um, we didn't change the range on the display here. We'll do that now. Normally that would be done prior to this. So I'm going to drop the range down so we have a better view of our waypoints. Now, if I zoom in over here, you see there's a little notch on the 100. We need to move the mouse to the left of the knob, <coughs> roll the wheel of the mouse down, and that puts it on 1000. Then we can actually click on, sorry, 
roll the mouse wheel on the knob itself and put that up to our flight level 330. There are constraints in our flight plan, which means it's going to be a stepped climb. We don't have to worry about that at all. Two, six, left, on runway. Two, six, left. Now the next thing, look at the uh, autopilot here. It should be dash dot, dash dot, number dot. This means every aspect is managed. So the autopilot is going to manage our speed, our heading, and our climb up to an altitude of 33,000 feet. We don't have to do anything other than turn the autopilot on once we get in the air. Let's look at the throttles here. This is actually very important as well. These are not your standard throttles like you would get in a Boeing. On runway. You see this? Two, six, At the moment, they're working very much like normal throttles two, in that as I move them, left. it changes the power to the engines. But notice there are some detents here like flex and take off and go around. We're doing a flex takeoff. And if I show you the uh, engine display here, flex takeoff means 82% power. So what we're going to do is we're going to advance the throttles and you will hear a click. You will see the uh, alerts over here change. The FMA will change to show an alert. We'll keep pushing until we hear another click and it will say flex. That means takeoff power is set. It's flex. It's being managed by the computers. We don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to power up. Listen for the click. There's the click. And again, there's another click. Oh, it's actually three clicks. There we go. As soon as you hit flex, Auto throttle comes on, you don't need to engage it, it just does it. Now all you have to do is with your rudder control keep the nose pointed down the runway, preferably on the center line, and wait to be told to rotate. Keep an eye on this display here as well. Just 100. We're waiting for the word rotate. All right, pull the stick back. Up comes the nose. Positive rate. Gear up. Gear up. Now look at that display. What I'm doing now is using my joystick to keep that yellow square centered on those two green lines. I'm also looking at the altitude. Once I get above 1,000 feet, I'm going to reduce the throttles to what's called climb thrust. So we need to go a little bit left now. That's 1,000 feet. Reduce the throttles. Climb thrust. We are centered now. So I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to turn on the autopilot. Autopilot on. And I'm completely hands off at this point. Now, let's go look at our flight plan real quick. Our first altitude constraint, we've got 2,500 at or above 2,500 at the next waypoint. At or above 3,000 at the waypoint after that, then 5,000, 6,000 straight after that. So let's go look where we are currently at. Whoops, I'm changing my views badly. Flips up. At or above 2,500, we're going to hit that, no problem. Notice after that the display check. here... Engine mode selector. I'll let them finish talking. Check normal. Boilers. This arm. Check retracted. Landing gear. Gear up, lights off. Exterior lights. Set off. Packs. Both on. Anti ice. Are off. TCAS. Checked. Altimeter. One zero zero five. One zero zero five. Check. <coughs> so the autopilot has already spotted that our first hard constraint at 5,000 is our first hard constraint. So it's actually set in here a managed hard altitude constraint of 5,000. It's also set a managed hard speed constraint of 250. So it's going to adjust our pitch to climb appropriately to hit that 5,000 hold there and our engines to reduce uh, power and therefore keep the speed down at 250. You can see we're coming up on that altitude constraint right now. Notice it's leveled the nose off quite a lot. This is our rate of climb over here, 600 feet per minute, 500 feet per minute, 400 feet per minute. Coming down now, coming down now. We've actually exceeded our speed. The computer will fix that. Obviously, the real aircraft is a lot better at managing that than the Aerosoft's version. Coming up on 5,000 now, we have altitude constraint lit up here. I'm not doing anything other than just monitoring in the instruments. And we have hit our constraint, 5,000 feet, 250. It is adjusting course now. See this line changing to get us onto that course line. Now, 
Now we do have some wind here from 195, a 30 knot wind. It's quite some wind. Which is why we're getting blown around a little bit. Next waypoint is coming up in two miles. That big magenta blob implies another constraint as well. OC 18 is our 5,000 foot constraint, and that's going to increase as soon as we hit this to 6,000. Watch over here. Which is what's in the flight plan. It's part of the SID that we selected. We didn't have to worry about it. Just went up to 6,000. Altitude constraint. We are now climbing. Power's coming back up. Nose is coming back up. Up we go. 3,000 feet per minute. Quite a steep climb there. Quite a steep climb. So it's only four miles away. And at 250 knots, you'll do that in no time. So leveling off now for 6,000. We're going to hit our constraint as we should. We're not going to get in trouble with the authorities. There we go. Pretty much leveled. Altitude constraint has lit up on the PFD primary flight display. And we're good to go. 0.8 miles until we hit that, at which point the altitude constraints are removed, I think, and we can just start our climb straight up to our flight level of 330. It's quite a short flight, so by the time we actually get there, we're going to be uh, looking to descend. Here we go. Cross -check. Up to 3000. That's our transition altitude, so if we look back up to the main display now, they've right clicked this, it's on standard. We are in cloud, doesn't really matter. We're flying fully automated instrument and flight computers managing everything so we don't have to con be concerned too much. Incidentally though, if the weather was worse, we would be watching down here at the temperatures. If that TAT temperature is approaching zero, the fact that we're in cloud means that we would need to turn on anti-ice. Or if you see ice detected, you would need to turn on anti-ice. Those switches are right here. One, two, three. Now we're getting above those clouds, climbing out now, which means you can turn our range up on our display. We're not too bothered anymore. Still in English airspace. See, there's Hardy. That's Bogner. There's our Lights turn. Off. Let's take a look outside. Oh, by the way, 10,000 feet is the point at which your landing lights come off. So they will manage that for us automatically. They just turned our landing lights off and retracted them. We are configured now to fly properly. That is the southern coast of England right there. Brighton and Eastbourne all along here. As we turn towards France. Climbing to flight level 330. Which I'm not actually sure we're going to make. Oh, we will. <coughs> you see this blue line? That's our top of climb. So anyway, let me take a look outside. There we are. Wonderfully configured, all done for us automatically, although we did put in a considerable amount of effort to figure out the route. Everything looks lovely. So that's the end of this second part of the absolute beginner's guide to Aerosoft's Airbus X. In the third part, we will be initiating our descent and then managing the full approach into LFPG or London, uh, Paris Charles de Gaulle, London, my goodness, Paris Charles de Gaulle, which will be an auto land to show you how that works. It's actually very easy. Thanks for watching. As always, my name is Frugal. If you have not checked it out yet, please do check out facebook.com slash frugalsim, and I will see you in part three.